What's up YouTube? My name is Jeremy Biggers. I'm an artist based out of Dallas, Texas. And today we're gonna to discuss the three things I wish I knew when I started painting murals. This won't be a definitive follow these steps and you'll become a professional muralist. These are just the three biggest things I wish I knew when I started. The doodle grid. The thing that used to stress me out the most about painting murals was figuring out exactly how I'm gonna get my design onto the wall. I'm not really comfortable freehanding my sketch since a lot of what I do is realism and is dependent on perfect proportions. One of my first solutions was using a projector. I could only use it at night, it had to have electricity and I always had to get back a certain distance to be able to throw it to the wall. And almost every time I felt like I wasted an entire day of work waiting for it to get dark enough to put my sketch up. And then about a year ago, I discovered the doodle grid. If you're not familiar with the doodle grid, it's where you lay down as many random shapes onto the wall as possible and then go in into a imaging program on your phone or a tablet and then lay a lower opacity version of the reference image that you're using on top of the doodles and squiggles that you just drew. This allows you to show up on site the day of with very little prep work and get started immediately. Do your homework. Something you should consider before you even agree to doing any mural is what the wall is made of. If it's a super textured wall, you're gonna to wanna to use spray paint because brush and roller might not be the most efficient. But if you're indoors with very little ventilation, spray paint might not be an option. Spray paint is a lot faster, but it's also a lot more expensive. So planning your mural needs to include things like how to make your process more efficient and how to be more cost effective. It may make more sense to cover large areas of flat color with bucket paint and then come back in with the details and blending with spray paint. But figuring out what works best for you and what's best for the piece that you're creating is the name of the game. Bonus tip, make a spreadsheet keeping track of all the paints that you're using by brand and name and how much you use because it'll help you in the future projects calculate how much paint you need. It'll also help if you ever need to go back and retouch or repair any murals that have been damaged. Make some free shit. No matter how talented you are, if people don't know you exist, they're not gonna hire you to do their job. So make as many free murals as you can afford to. Don't take out a mortgage on your house to make this happen. They don't need to be huge murals, they just need to be large enough to prove that you can handle a large wall. The key here is to build a portfolio. I'm fortunate enough to live in a city that has a free wall and I'm able to paint there anytime I want. I was able to kind of build up a portfolio. Doing things this way gave me practice, but it also allowed me the ability to build up my confidence. So I'm not having to show up on site when I'm getting paid to do a mural and have all that pressure on me of trying to figure out and learn the materials. I know the cost of doing murals can be prohibitive for a lot of people. So reaching out to small businesses in your community to see if they have walls available as well as if they would be willing to cover the supplies puts you in a position where you're able to practice without putting yourself in a financial bind. And the bonus tip here is be okay with hearing the word no. Don't take it personally. Or you can do like I do and take it very personally and make them regret it on the next mural that you create. It became personal with me. I'm joking, mostly. All right, so that's it for this one. If you like content like this and wanna see more of it, consider liking and subscribing here on YouTube. Hit that bell notification in the corner so that you're notified every single time that I post. And follow me on Instagram so that you can see the projects and things that I'm working on real time. I'll see you guys on the next one.